fellas, we can be that mistake. Let's do this. What's up, What's y'all? What's going on, guys? We are Embrace the Suck 21. Yes, we are. I'm Spencer. And I'm Daniel. And happy International Women's Day. What? Yep. It's cool. No, no one better qualified to put something out on International Women's Day than two cis, straight, white, American dudes. Yep. But, but hey, if I figure, because it would fit the aesthetic of the channel, we would check out the powers that the most powerful woman in the world, the Queen of England, has. Yes. Maybe we'll learn something today. Like, you know, you know us. Like we we usually do stick and ball sports, motorsports. This is not music, up there. Uh, other yeah. comedy, that kind of stuff. This is more educational. And who is this? It's on the Today I Found Out channel. Yes. Our boy Simon, who uh, was just talking right before we hit record, that he's a very recognizable face on this he, platform. One hundred percent, and not just on this platform. He's he's he has multiple yeah. channels. Yeah, got to admire the uh, up button shirt with the the hairiness on yep. there. Let's, yep. let's let's dive in. Let's do it. Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at what powers the Queen of England actually has. And just before you get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Tunnel Bear. Tunnel Bear is a... All right, let's skip the ad here. There you go. There you go, right there. Yep. I'll cut this part out. Ago, we put out a video about the fact that Queen Elizabeth II neither needs a passport nor a driving license thanks to a quirk of British law. But what other powers does the Queen of Many Titles have, and what could she theoretically do if she decided to flex the full might of the authority that she wields? As it turns out, thanks to the royal prerogative, a terrifying amount if she really felt like it, or at least that's assuming Parliament went by the letter of the law and that the people didn't decide to stage a small revolt. In reality, the Queen rarely exists even a fraction of the power that she theoretically wields as it's kept in check by the only person in the UK who can tell her what to do, and that's herself. This is very much a calculated move on her part in order to stay in the good graces of her subjects. She also voluntarily pays her taxes even though she's not technically obligated to, and that helps with people's opinion of her. Not only does she avoid openly flexing her political might, she also tends to keep her opinions outside of the public sphere. As historian Frank Prohaska notes, the real secret of royal influence is saying nothing. And anything the Queen does say publicly is pretty anodyne. The minute a monarch or many of the royals say anything remotely political or opinionated, they alienate people and they lose some power. This silence played a large part in how the British monarchy survived post-World War I when other European royal families didn't. Interesting. Interesting. So their power is staying quiet. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I mean, we're only minute 45 in, but hey. Right. Uh, that's that's admirable that you know she's <laughs> like i got all this power but i'm not gonna do it because i want to keep the family looking good yeah that's not the case over here uh-uh <laughs> they have a voice they will talk yep yep like the, the our head of state is like the worst customer service job ever like you have to like answer everybody's call no matter what you can't say no it's yep. like you have to it's like us if we had to go through every single negative comment and and answer it. That would. Oh my yeah. god, that'd be terrible. I'd probably more align myself with the queen. Like you know, just don't say nothing. Yeah, just don't say anything. Just don't say nothing. Don't say anything. Ugh. In fact, for nearly two decades now, the monarchy has regularly had polls run and focus groups put together to keep track of how the general public feels about them and their various actions. They also have on payroll individuals whose job it is to ensure the Queen stays in the public eye and in a way that is most likely to endear her to her subjects. Similar to politicians who rely on the voting public, with each public change she presents, right down to the carrying of a cell phone or not, carefully calculated in terms of the impact it might have. While this may seem only so we'll never see the Queen of England on TikTok. Unless it's deemed that she needs to be. Right, right. Unless the focus groups determine that the Queen of England should come up with the latest TikTok trend. <laughs> yeah. That would be funny. <laughs> that would be funny. 
Completely self-serving, the Queen has a very lengthy track record as an admirable public servant and is also acutely aware that she is a prominent public face representing her subjects. So is keen on avoiding being viewed in a bad light, lest she in turn paint them in a bad light by her actions. As she noted at the tender age of 21 in a speech to the Commonwealth she gave on her birthday, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family, to which we all belong. Surprisingly, for many years the full extent of exactly what powers the Queen handed off to the government, but technically retained, weren't publicly known. That is, until 2003, when the government released a partial list of the things it can do on the Queen's behalf. For the most part, the list confirms that the government could do things to save the Queen time, such as issue or revoke passports which simply wouldn't be a feasible thing to be the sole prerogative of the crown in a modern society. However, some were actually slightly worried by some of the things she could do, like declare war, which under rules of royal prerogative can be done without consulting parliament. Wow. On top of that, the queen is totally immune from prosecution and is considered above the law in the UK. And further... Oh, so basically, what's the Trump quote? She could go down Fifth Avenue, shoot someone, and not lose any support. Yeah, she's she's the queen. Yeah, she's the goddamn queen. Yeah, that, that I mean, yeah, she would never. Right, right. But she could if she wanted to, <laughs> and get away with it. Yeah, and uh, that and that's interesting to see that she can declare war without parliament. With in America, you can only declare war with uh, a majority vote in Congress. Yeah, hence but, monarchy. Right, right, you monarchy. Had the root word of that is mono. Yeah. Yeah. Not poly. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's I, I don't know what the word is. I'm I'm not gonna but put no, my foot in my yeah, mouth. I mean, yeah, but it's just. Yeah. It, it, it. She could do it. Right. She could do it because she doesn't need all the checks and balances that we go through. They're just lucky that she hasn't acted at all. Right. Right. She's like, always she... acted with her people in the best interest. Yeah. Like the best yeah. interest of her people. Right. Right. But right. she could. If, that's if she wanted to. <laughs> As a head of state, she also enjoys diplomatic immunity in any foreign country she happens to visit. As such, she could commit any crime conceivable anywhere on earth, at least as the law currently stands, and suffer no legal consequences for doing so. However, as with everything else, she's generally exceptionally careful to ensure that she doesn't break any laws. Of course, what she does in private is completely her own affair, despite her prominent political position, as she is exempt from freedom of information requests. So, moving on, because technically speaking, the people of Britain are not citizens, but subjects of the monarch, she could have anyone she wanted arrested and presumably seize their property or land for the crown. Speaking of which, the Queen owns all of the seabeds around the UK and can commandeer any ship found in British waters for service to the realm. Oddly enough, she also has first dibs on any whales that wash up on shore. The Queen could also administer... Oh, so like if the, she... Like the sturgeon. Yeah. <laughs> if she wants a whale sushi... God damn it, she's gonna have some whale sushi. If she washes up, it's hers. First dibs. Yep, yep. Like, hey, a whale! Clear with the queen. If she doesn't want whale tonight, it's ours. Uh huh, yep, yep. Any manner of punishment to an individual who offended or otherwise displeased her, as the Crown has prerogative power to keep the peace within the realm. And since she's immune from prosecution, nobody could really do anything if this punishment wasn't entirely within the scope of the law. If the government tried to stop her, the Queen could decimate the British political landscape by dissolving Parliament and appointing anyone she felt like as Prime Minister. This is because oh. it's the Queen's duty to oh, appoint God. the Prime Minister. Oh, wow. So she could basically burn the fucking world down and could declare herself dictator. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, Which, man. I mean, it speaks volumes of her. Yeah, that she know, hasn't. That she hasn't. Mm-hmm. Man. Mm. <laughs> God. Prime Minister, and she could, in theory, appoint anyone she wanted to the position, regardless of the way the British public voted in an election. On top of that, in the event the Queen didn't like the outcome of an election, for instance, if she didn't like the replacement Parliament members that were voted in, she could just call for another one using royal prerogative until she got the Parliament she wanted. Not that she'd need to, because if she really wanted, she'd just bring in the army to keep everyone in line. But how does that work? How do wow. So, basically, she could do what uh, uh, our, the previous president tried to do if yeah, she wanted to. Yeah, she's just to. a nice... She's, she's just very just... nice. She's she's the dictator we all want to have. Right, right. <laughs> the one that's behind the scenes, not causing uh -huh. crazy waves. Oh man.
<laughs> We're saying a lot of things that could get us <laughs> unsubscribed. No, it's just, come on, the queen. She's a, a very regal old lady that has a, 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 a very sharp mind. Yeah. For business and relations. Yeah, knows, knows not to do anything that would make yeah. her and the royal family look bad. And this video spotlights the fact that she could be a billion times worse if she right. wanted to. Right, right. She could, but she chooses not to. <laughs> yeah. I, I respect that a lot. She's like Bruce Banner. She could easily turn to the Hulk. <laughs> but she doesn't. How does she control the army? Well, that's because the Queen is also the commander-in-chief of the entire British military, with every officer, soldier, sailor, and pilot swearing allegiance to the crown and nobody else. They're not called Her Majesty's Armed Forces for nothing. Being considered the ultimate authority on all British military matters, the Queen could authorize a nuclear strike on France or make North Korea an ally, as she has the power to declare both war and peace with foreign nations. As for laws, well, technically the Queen can't create new laws, she can only sign them into law after they've been decided upon by Parliament. In fact, her royal assent is required to make the law official after being passed by Parliament in the first place. She could appoint ministers who'd make any laws she wanted a reality and then just sign them into law that way. Beyond royal assent, there's also the Queen's consent, which requires she give her consent before any law that affects the interests of the monarchy can even be discussed at all in Parliament. She actually has used this power before, such as in 1999 when she refused to allow the discussion of a bill that would have given Parliament power to authorize military strikes in Iraq instead of needing her authorization. So, well, that's all on the political. That's smart. That's smart. So basically, you know, she's the head of state, <coughs> and basically any law uh, needs her uh, sign off on, like a like our president. Like a checks and balance. Yeah. That's one of their checks and balances. One of the few checks and balances, apparently. <laughs> okay, so we're we're transitioning from political stuff, and let's, let's see, see where it goes. Else. Yeah side, but it doesn't stop here. The Queen technically has a sort of power not only over her subjects' physical beings, but also their souls. Well, how? Well, that's because she's also the head of the Church of England, including having the power to appoint archbishops and power over many other such matters concerning the Church. As for most of these powers that technically allow her to rule with an iron fist, as previously mentioned, the Queen is hesitant to ever use them in such a way that would displease her subjects, and certainly isn't about to disregard their representatives in Parliament. However, these powers still exist for a variety of reasons, including potentially being needed in times of extreme crisis. That said, just because she isn't in the practice of exercising her powers against the will of the people, it doesn't mean she isn't occasionally an active political powerhouse in private. Extremely well-respected and known worldwide with the ability to bend the ear of most heads of state, the influence the Queen wields is difficult to quantify, but as noted in an article discussing why the BBC named the Queen the most powerful woman in the world in their list of 100 most powerful women, Her Majesty's power is more about influence. A discreet nod of the head, a polite word in the ear of a prime minister at their weekly meeting, or a strategic patronage of a cause being overlooked by the government, is how she can indirectly affect our world without us even knowing. Well, to conclude, the Queen has many powers she could theoretically legally use to her own ends unless her subjects and Parliament simply decided to stage a revolution. However, she generally avoids doing anything overt that might upset her subjects and otherwise simply works in the background, more or less in an advisory role when she feels there is a need. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Now, if you are interested in protecting your privacy online well then you ri here's another ad here Let's see if we can i think i think i think we pretty good much can edit here yeah yeah but it's a lot of it's very interesting uh, it is. to see and, and it kind of gives me a new respect for the queen of england i i you know i here in america like the royal family is looked well, at as it, it's it's something alien yeah it's, and it's kind of looked on as the same as like the kardashians you know they they always find a way to get themselves to go viral on, on social media, on some sort of platform. Yeah, like keeping yeah. up with the royal family. Yeah, keeping up with the Joneses, keeping up with the Kardashians. So, uh, but it's good. It's good to you know that uh, you know she has more power than we thought. Yeah, I I, I bet the average uh, American citizen does not know what the queen can or can't do. No, no, they just know that. They have a queen. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And it seems like she's like, like, pretty much just an advisor. You know, 
just you know you need the fi- she need you need her to have the final signature but she's more an advisor yep. like uh, the prime minister is the head of state like as of right now is yeah. Boris Johnson yeah i but, mean well it's it's interesting it's always interesting to see the the breakdown of, of what she could do yeah yeah you know just likewise i mean i'm but i feel like since the united states is always in the spotlight more people know what the president can and can can't do yeah, at least I hope so. <laughs> yeah, and, and and it's interesting to see that what the queen can and can't do. Yeah, and I just feel like it's very fortunate that she hasn't done the things she could do. Yeah, because <laughs> that would that would be terrifying. Yeah, man, God save the queen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because as of right now, the time of this recording, uh, she has. Uh, tested positive for COVID, so we wish her a speedy recovery. Yes. And please don't go crazy and yeah. do all these powers with COVID braid, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, Simon, I'm going to give this oh, video yeah. two thumbs this up. This is awesome. It's for always, putting... always informative. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he does good with this. Yep. Um, you know, comment below, like, um, some other educational stuff that you'd like us to check out. Um, outside of political. Outside of political, we... We try to steer away from that type of stuff, but yep. you know we make an exception for this because she is the most powerful woman on the earth, and uh, it is International who Women's would, Day. Who would who would you say is the second? Uh, Kim, Oprah? Car- Kim Kardashian. Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> no, Kim. She's lost all merit. <laughs> she's lost all merit. Mm. But uh, I would say Oprah right next to her, right up there in the running. Um, I don't know. Um. Uh, Michelle, Michelle o- Obama. Obama still has weight, right? Kamala Harris, she's the vice president yeah. right now at the yeah. time of this recording. Yeah, so oh, uh, I don't know. Let us let us know. Let us know. Yep. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting the bell, and sharing with your friends. Definitely, guys. Till next time, wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck, and unplug from your devices for a while, guys, and go on an adventure. And happy International Women's Day. Yes. Later. <laughs>